Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and I'm so glad to be with you again today. I'm actually delighted to be with you today. I hope you are getting blessed by these programs. It certainly blesses me, and what blesses me, I hope will bless you as well. All right, we're talking about the different mysteries in the Bible, uh, and, and I'm in chapter 2 of Ephesians, and Paul's bringing out the mystery of the one new man, which is the, uh, the, uh, the union of the Jew and the Gentile brought together as one new man. That's a, that's a mystery. And now I have to say again, this, is, this letter is not talking about the world. This, wor this letter is talking about the body of Christ, the multi-membered body of Christ. Basically, that's what this, this uh, book is talking about. All right, now um, let's uh, continue on because I've, I've talked about that uh, the Jew, the Gentile, was not a part of the family of God until after Christ after, uh, and through the new covenant. Now we're brought into the family of God. And so, and of course, Paul has gone all over uh, his, uh, his three journeys, and now he's in Ephesus, and that's in Turkey, actually. He's in the city of Ephesus, or he's writing to them. I mean, I, I better say this properly, right, because he wasn't really there at the time he's writing the letter to the Ephesians, and, which is in Turkey. He himself was in prison at this time. This is a, one of the prison letters. Okay, now let's go on to see what he's saying. He's saying in times past, the Gentiles were not in the family of God. They were not according to the covenant of promise. They were not added in until now. And he is bringing forth, Paul's always bringing forth the great mysteries of the kingdom. I mean, Jesus brought forth the mysteries of the kingdom to his disciples, and he did it in a mysterious way because he brought it forth in parables. The kingdom of God is likened unto this. The kingdom of God is likened unto that. And, so, and now Paul is bringing forth mysteries. Now, if you think about it, the uh, program, when we start this program, uh, the announcer always says, uh, Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Well, actually, the Bible says uh, that that is a mystery that was hidden and now made known by Paul that Christ is in us is the, and, and is the only hope of glory. So now this, Paul's bringing out another mystery to these Gentiles, telling them that they were without God in this world until they were until the time of Jesus Christ when at Pentecost, when Pentecost was, um, uh, when the Holy Spirit be, uh, birthed the church, or the body of Christ, the same thing as the church. The body of Christ is the same as the church, and the church is not just a building or a denomination. It is the body of Christ wherever the body of Christ is all over the world. Okay, so it's saying, but the Gentiles were without God in this world until, until now, it says in verse 13. But now in Jesus Christ, ye who were sometimes far off are now made nigh, close, by the blood of Christ. You've, you've come into the kingdom. You've come into a new kingdom, the kingdom of God, by the blood of Jesus. That's the only way today any of us can be saved and any of us can be transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. That's what the, uh, Colossians says. Now then it says this, for he, that means Christ, is our peace. Now I love that verse. It's not saying he's going to give us peace. He is our peace. He will manifest because he's the prince of peace. So he will manifest his peace through us and by us and as us because it is his peace. It says he is our peace. Not that he's going to give it to the vessel, but he'll express it 
through the vessel and you'll experience peace. That's how we experience peace. But he's talking about the peace of the difference between the Jew and the Gentile because they were always, remember, I mean, even Jesus called the woman that came to him a dog. You're a Gentile dog. Wow. But remember, he also went to Samaria and Samaria was a mixture. They were a mixture of Jew and uh, Gentile mixture. He went them there and gave them the gospel. So God has always been after the Gentile, but he had to do it exactly the way he said he was going to do it. And he did it through Jesus to really bring together both Jew and Gentile into the new creation or the new man. Now, I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about believers and I'm talking about the new creation. All right. Now, Christ is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, between the Jew and the Gentile, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the, uh, the warfare, really, in between the Jew and the Gentile, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances for to make in him twain together one new man. See, that's the mystery of oneness is the two become one. The two become one. That's the mystery of uh, marriage. The two become one, you see. So he's now breaking down all the, uh, the uh, prejudices and all everything. And I, I, I will have to say this. Uh, God kind of made it that the Jews were going to be prejudiced against the Gentiles. How? He had to make himself a family, a pure family, because the bloodline had to come through who he had promised Abraham. So the bloodline had to remain pure, you see, so that the legal right to the throne, which was Jesus Christ, and he is the Davidic prince, uh, the legal right to David's throne, and he's it. You see, he had to fulfill that. And of course, Christ did that. So legally, he had to bring it through what he had already promised, not legalistically, I don't mean that. I mean, according to the law of his being, which is what he says he's going to have to bring into being. So he had, this was his way to do it, is to keep them exclusive and to themselves and tell them not to marry the Gentile women because they always brought in the false gods anyway, which brought them off of the true, true God, Yahweh. So... So God more or less formed that mentality in them. So now he's changing it. That's it. God is just like that. He will get you settled in one direction, then all of a sudden he switches, he changes. Wow, now it, it's going to be different. It's not going to be just the Jews. It's going to be the Gentiles. Now Dave, uh, Peter had to go through this. Peter, they, they all were prejudiced. They all thought a certain way. God wanted them to think a certain way and now God blew that blew their mind and says now uh, it's different because there's a new covenant coming and the new covenant is we're going to we're going to we're it's really going to fulfill Abraham's covenant by embracing uh, the Gentiles as well and that that's what he and we're going to make one new man we're going to make one new multi-membered body of Christ uh, and I call it Mount Zion. It's like a mountain, the multi-membered body of Christ. Many members, one head, you see. Well, mixed with Jews and Gentiles, brought into the family of God when, even, when the Jews receive Christ. Now, not all the Jews have received Christ. We know that. But not all Gentiles have received Christ. So it's those who have received Christ and received the Spirit of Christ you see, then there we're brought into the family of God and made one new man, okay, that he might reconcile unto God in one body, that's the body, the multi-membered body of Christ, by the cross being slain, having slain the enmity thereof. In other words, he, he crucified uh, the division there was between Jew and Gentile when he, when his, when he was Hanging, hanging on the cross, he died for everybody. It says God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the whole world into himself. So the possibility of anyone in the world, Jew or Gentile, is provided through the cross. Now it has to be received. And just because he 
paid that price for the whole world does not mean the whole world is automatically saved. That's where people really get off. But that is not what the Bible is saying. Verse 17, And he came and preached peace to you which were afar off, he's talking to the Gentiles, and to them that were nigh, and that means to the Jews as well. The, so the gospel goes out to the Jew and Gentile. It says to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. It says that in Romans, the first chapter of Romans. For through him we both have access to one spirit unto the Father. Oh my goodness, now we Gentiles can call God our Father. When we receive Christ, he is our Father. Wow, what a privilege. How great is this? How great is this that God's mercy would go to the whole world? Every, every kind of Gentile, every nation, the gospel goes to the whole world. And it's, it's saying, come on in to the family of God. But you've got to come in God's way and not your own understanding or your own way. It's not many ways. It's only one way, and that's God's way. And that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, because Gentiles were, but fellow citizens with the saints, with the saints, and of the household of God. Oh, my gosh. We got a, we got a new home. We, we're in the household of God. Don't, don't, isn't that wonderful? So the household of God is not one particular church. It's not one particular denomination. It's, it's really not. It's the body of Christ is the multi-membered body of Christ, mysteriously scattered all over the world in probably all denominations in every nation. In every city, there's always some that, are, that, that belong to the, to the household of God because they've come through the one door, which is Christ himself. And then it says in verse 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So we're built now. We can uh, take hold of the Old Testament and all that they promised as well, the apostles and the prophets. Okay, the prophets all in the Old Testament. You know, there's, a lot, there's some movements today that uh, they're, they're, you know, they call themselves grace movements, and I, I, I'm not going to touch that one because, of course, it is all by grace. But so, so, so much of the time we go way too far and say, let's throw out the Old Testament. Let's throw out everything Jesus said because it's just law. No, it says now we can be included. The old and the new are included together. We're, Christ fulfilled it. He didn't replace it. He fulfilled it. So now, now they've laid a foundation, and now we can, we're built on that, him being the chief cornerstone. And I love this, the citizenship with the saints. I love that. He called the Old Testament uh, believers saints. He says... Just think of this one verse in Psalms. I looked up this verse not long ago when a friend of mine passed, died. Precious in the sight of the Lord are the saints of the Lord. The precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Wow. So he called the Old Testament people saints. You see, he calls us saints. Any believer is called a saint. <laughs> wow. We might not act too saintly at times, but that's what he has named us. We better go ahead and say what he's named us. But it's all built on the cornerstone. Now, a cornerstone really is like the capstone. It's the one that really holds up the whole building, I believe. Now, I'm not a builder, so I could be corrected on that. And people that are builders could do a whole, a whole teaching on this, him being the cornerstone. But we're, but we're fit together. We're all fit together, both Jew and Gentile, in the body of Christ, in the, uh, as new creations in Christ, growing into a holy temple unto God. This temple is not a house, not a building, but it's the mysterious, multi-membered body of Christ. All, I mean, you, you'll find believers all over the place and in every denomination, really. All right, 22. And I, I hate that when people say, only if you go to my church, you can't be saved unless you go to my church. <sighs> Stay away from that. That's not what God says. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. Trust in the blood of Jesus and you will be saved. And, um, you know, people put so many stipulations on their particular doctrines. Well, 
we better go back to the doctrine of the apostle, and he certainly didn't do that. Paul did not do that. And I, I quoted this verse in chapter 2, of 16, chapter 2, verse 16 of Romans, says that we're all going to be judged. We're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ according to Christ. We're going to be judged according, according to Paul's gospel. So we better understand Paul's gospel and get away from all this denominational thinking. You see, we, we close, we, we put God in a box when we do that. He's much bigger than that. All right, verse 22. And whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. My goodness, we are a holy, multi-membered temple of God, a holy habitation where God lives. Wow, think of that. That is huge. It, it, and so it's not in some kind of building. It's in his people, wherever they are. Wow, that, that, is, that is just fabulous. All right, verse, chapter 3. For this I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for the Gentiles, and he was actually put into, he was put into prison, and he was in prison when he wrote this, and he says, for the Gentiles. Why would he say that? Well, uh, because uh, he, his ministry was to the Gentiles. Paul, Peter's ministry was to the Jew. We see that in Galatians. Uh, his, uh, he was the apostle to the Gentiles. Well, the Jews, the many of the Jews who were still had Jewish mentality of inclusiveness, that you, you're not included, Gentiles are not included, were pretty much against him and persecuted him, tried to kill him. And actually, because of it, he ended up in prison. Think of it. For the Gentiles, so that he could bring us in. Wow. Do we love Paul or not? Wow. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to you, to me, to you were. In other words, this grace was given to me, Now, I'm, I, and I gave it to you, you, you Gentiles, in Ephesus. And Ephesus also... Is also, this is also for the city of Laodicea. Some people say this letter was written to the Laodicean church and passed on to Ephesus. Well, either way, they're, they're not far from each other. They're both in Turkey, so uh, one to the other. Now listen, verse 3. But the point is that the grace of God was given to him. Wow, do you know why he is the apostle to the grace of God? Because he received the biggest amount of it, and he knew it. Because remember, he killed all the Christians. Remember that? Before he was saved, he went out murdering all the Christians. And God, after in the road to Damascus, Damascus Jesus uh, sat by, sitting by the Father, spoke from heaven and said to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? In other words, why are you, I identify myself with my body. I'm not just me. Here in heaven, the head, I'm also the body there on earth, and you're persecuting me. Oh, my gosh. When he found out what he had been and what he was doing, it killed him. And he, but he found grace. He found forgiveness. Wow. When you've been that sinful, see, he thought he was doing a God a service, but, it, but the truth was he was sinning like crazy. Well, when he found himself a sinner, and God forgave him. He says, oh my gosh, thank you for your grace. Thank you that you loved me so much that you have given me grace and mercy when I did not deserve it. You're not going to know grace and mercy until you realize you don't deserve it and God gives it to you anyway. Wow. Paul knew that. That's why he was an apostle to the Gentiles that could give the grace of God and give it in power because he had received it so powerfully. All right, verse 3 of chapter 3 of Ephesians. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in few words, whereby when, he, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. He says, so what he's saying there, what he's saying there, the mystery of 
to the saints that he wrote to them is that Christ would be in them too, that the Spirit would be in them, the Spirit of Christ would be in the Gentiles as well as in the Jews. And, uh, and he said he had just, he had written to them previously that, which in when other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Wow. So he's saying, you know what? God gave me this ministry, and I'm a steward of mysteries. He said that. The steward of bringing out God's mysteries. Let's talk a minute about that. Mystery, that word mystery. That means it's been, re un it's been concealed, and now he's bring it's being revealed. And so uh, that's what mystic means, it's, it's, it's mystery. You know, people, when we talk, sometimes I will read even like the Catholic mystics. People say, oh, that's evil. That's fortune telling. Well, uh, that's the wrong use. Of, and I'm not saying that the Catholic mystics were the, like St. John of the Cross. They suffered greatly. And uh, Mother Teresa was, was really a mystic as well. And, but some of the old Catholic people that really before Martin Luther's time, they were really saints, you see, wrote. And they were called mystics because they understood the deep mysteries of God. Well, I mean, people want to throw out that word because they think it's evil. Well, you see, it's been misused. The real truth is Jesus was a mystic because he said, I'm going to bring out the mysteries of the kingdom. And Paul was a mystic, he says, because I'm going to bring out the mysteries of, uh, of the gospel. I'm going to bring out the mysteries of the Jews and the Gentiles. So, uh, and they were brought to the apostles. So, and he was that po apostle and prophet is what he's saying. Uh, Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God. I love that. I made a minister. I didn't deserve it. Look what I did. But it's past. My past sins are forgiven. I'm totally cleansed. And God will use that for, to cause me to know the great love that God had for me when he called me by his grace and revealed his son in me. It says that in Galatians. Uh, but he called me and gave according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power, unto me who is the least of the least of all the saints. He says that because he felt that way because the other uh, apostles, they walked with Jesus. He didn't that way. He saw Jesus at the, on the road to Damascus, but he did not. He did not walk and learn from Jesus. And so, but he learned in another way that was probably more powerful. We can, people always say, oh, if I could only walk with Jesus, then you see those disciples hardly knew anything, really. Jesus had to correct them all the time and say, oh, you of little faith. They hardly knew anything. Now he, he imparted spirit, Holy Spirit to them and they did good works, but it was temporary. Not until Pentecost was the permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit in, in his body. That did not come until Pentecost. Okay, but he says, I'm the least of these saints, but, but because I murdered all these Christians, I murdered these Christians, you see, that's why I feel that way. And that's okay, because I've been given such a great ministry, it humbles me. You see, that's what he's saying. And he's saying, and I consider myself the least. I mean, there's a scripture in Philippians that says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. It says uh, that uh, consider others greater than yourself. Let that mind be in you. Well, this is the mind that Paul has. And he says, I'm the least of all the saints. Is, and this grace was given to me. And so that's why he knew it so well and could, could then impart it to the Gentiles that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Oh my gosh, this is too great. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent, this is what God intended, that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places, and I take it that there are the principalities and powers and rulers of the rulers of darkness that rule over this world that he might be made known to them he might show off his body is what he's saying 
and they might know by the church, by the body of Christ, the manifold wisdom of God that you thought you won, you think you're winning, Satan. You know, I want to tell you, uh, you don't even understand my wisdom. It's far, it's past finding out. You have no idea. You have no understanding of how I can bring my kids into being. And uh, you, you think you've got your kids into being because the Bible says we, before we were saved, we were children of the devil. So there's either children of God or children of the devil. So he says to the devil and all the principalities and powers, look at my kids. I want to show them off. And you're going to see that all along I knew I was going to bring about the new creation, my spirit being, I'm going to bring them back to the first, the way the first Adam was as a glorified being. And I'm going to do it through my son, Jesus Christ, and it, through his body. Now I'm going to show off my wisdom to the whole world and to the principalities and say, ah, oh, you had no idea. When you crucified the Lord of glory, you had no idea what I was going to bring into being, which is the multi-membered body of Christ. This is the unsearchable riches of God. Oh, my goodness, people. Do you see it? God's plan is so big, so mighty, and he can take anything that the devil does and turn it around and bring out his eternal purposes that he intended from the very beginning. What a God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Wow, that's a song, and I love that song. What a mighty God we serve. Wow. Bow down before him. Bow down before him. Love and adore him. What a mighty God we serve. So thank you for joining me, and may God richly bless you. And I, I hope to be with you again next time. Goodbye. I hope that you are being blessed by The Liberating Secret. If you would like to have for yourself my books, booklets, or any of my TV or radio series, check out our website's bookstore. Our TV shows are also on our YouTube site. And be sure to get The Liberating Secret app for your phone. We have an annual Louisville conference in June, as well as a biannual Woman's Retreat at Polly's Island, South Carolina. Come for a weekend or a week of study, fun, fellowship by the ocean. We also have a weekly Bible study. See our website for times and location. My husband and Scott and I would love to come and share the liberating truth to your fellowship, church, or home group. Please call or contact us through the website. If you would like to donate to our ministry, make your checks out to Christ Our Life Ministries, Post Office Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. Please pray for us, and we will pray God's very best for you.